I'm Mary Silla Kellerton with another episode of Scope. Sir Rabi Langanai Namali was a prominent figure in the history of Papua New Guinea, serving as the country's Prime Minister, Foreign Minister and Finance Minister. Born on April 3, 1947, in the East New Britain province, Serabi was the embodiment of Melanesian values and made significant contributions to academia, politics and business. He was a distinguished academic in the field of history and a top public servant who ran the public sector in the years after independence. Serabi's passing on March 31, 2023 at the age of 76 has left the country in mourning, with many Papua New Guineans remembering him as a man of formidable character, who easily gained the confidence of society at large. In this segment, we remember the life and legacy of Sir Rabi Namaliu, paying tribute to a Melanesian icon and statesman who will be deeply missed. Sir Rabi Langanai Namali was born in East New Britain province in the Australian Territory of New Guinea on the 3rd of April 1947. To early local missionaries, Darius and Utuloa Namali, at a mission station at Watnabara Duke of York in East New Britain province. He was the eldest of eight. When he was born, Andrew Ilam, a first cousin to Sir Rabi, recollects the blessings Sir Rabi received at birth by the early white missionaries. He says, When he was born, because he had a big head, the sisters would carry him every morning, and they told his parents, You know what? When this man grows up, he's going to be a big man. He's going to be a clever, educated man. Sir Rabi Namali received his education in Papua New Guinea and in Canada at the University of Victoria in British Columbia. Prior to his political career, he was an academic in the field of political science at the University of Papua New Guinea. In 1987, Sir Rabi married Margaret Nakikus, who later headed the country's National Planning Office. They had two sons, Isaac and Langanai Rabi Jr. Their daughter Joy was later introduced into the family. After his defeat in Parliament in 1992, he left politics to be with his wife Margaret, who had been diagnosed with incurable leukemia and was in hospital. She sadly died on the 8th of September 1993. He remarried to Kilin Tavul and together had three children with her, Aaron, Lorna and Helen. On 31st of March 2023, Sir Rabi Langane Namaliu died at the age of 76. The passing of Sir Rabi Namaliu has left the country in mourning and remembers him as the embodiment of Melanesian values and his contributions to academia, politics and business. Sir Rabi was part of the Gang of Four alongside late Sir Mikhail Morauta, Charles Lepani and late Sir Anthony Siaguru who helped shape public policy and build the civil service. He also served as the private secretary to Chief Minister Michael Somare in 1974, a year before PNG gained independence. Sir Rabi went on to serve as foreign minister and played a significant role in building international relations with countries on both sides of the globe. In 1988, Sir Rabi became PNG's fourth prime minister after being elected following a vote of no confidence motion. He held the position for four years, leading the Pangu-led government into the elections in 1992. Sir Rabi's leadership style reminiscent of traditional Melanesian big men earned him respect even after his term as Prime Minister ended. As a Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea, he was a member of the Imperial Privy Council from 1989 and was styled the Right Honourable. He served as foreign minister until 12 July 2006 
when he became finance minister during a cabinet reshuffle. Sir Rabi subsequently lost his seat of Kokopo Open at the 2007 election, but had not ruled out a future return into politics. He lost his cabinet post when the new government, again led by Somare, took office in August 2007. Sir Rabi's legacy has not been without controversy, particularly regarding his involvement in the civil unrest in Bougainville that resulted in the closure of the Panguna mine. He was blamed for sending troops to quell the unrest, but his willingness to accept responsibility and admit his direct role earned him forgiveness from the people of Bougainville. I am sorry that I caused you such hardships, such trauma. It is something that has been on my shoulders all these years, for the last 30 years. It's been a huge burden that I've been trying to find time myself to atone for publicly. And today, I guess, tonight, it is the first time ever that I have stood in front of a large gathering like this. Governor for New Ireland Sir Julius Chan praised him as a man of formidable character who gained the confidence of society at large. Sir Julius expressed deep sorrow upon hearing the news of the passing of the former Prime Minister and close friend Sir Rabi Namalyu. Sir Julius was in Brisbane for a medical checkup when he had received the news. Sir Julius reminisced, saying, He was naturally classed as a true gentleman by anyone who had the good fortune of meeting him and became Prime Minister at the country's most challenging period, during the beginning of the Bougainville crisis and his natural diplomatic skills were evident during his role as Foreign Affairs and Immigration Minister from August 2002 to July 2006. Sir Rabi was a distinguished academic in the field of history and a top public servant who ran the public sector in the years after independence and held several other senior ministries including primary industry and petroleum and energy before being elected Prime Minister from 1988 to 1992. Sir Julius conveyed his heartfelt condolences on behalf of his family and the people of New Ireland to Sir Rabi's immediate family saying, We have lost one of our finest. I know no words can truly take away the pain that you are feeling at this moment, but God has a reason for everything and I hope you will find comfort in the knowledge that your beloved served with great passion, kindness and humility and was truly loved by many. In his tribute, the reappointed Governor General of Papua New Guinea Grand Chief Sir Bob Dadai described late Sir Rabi Namalu as a proud Papua New Guinean who exemplified outstanding leadership during his term as the fourth Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea. He said, Sir Rabi was a distinguished leader and statesman who began his career in the public service pre-independence and played a significant role in formulating public service policies and the national constitution. In 2020, I had the honour of being in the company of Sir Rabi, Sir Julius Chan and the late Grand Chief Sir Michael Somare in New Island province where Sir Rabi left a lasting impression on me as a man of great dignity and a proud tolai. His passing is a significant loss for the nation and the people of East New Britain. After the break, a Melanesian big man is given the Tumbuan welcome when he makes his final visit home. On April 2023, the funeral party, comprising of dignitaries, close family and friends, gathered at the ANG Charter Lounge in Port Moresby to accompany Papua New Guinea's fourth Prime Minister, Sir Rabi Namalu homebound to Tokwa Airport that serves Kokopo and Rabaul, the current and former capitals of East New Britain province on New Britain Island. The emotional way to bring the Melanesian icon back to his home province for the last time was shared by esteemed figures such as old-time friend and one of the Gang of Four, Sir Charles Lapani. The entourage included MP Jelta Wong, Dame Meg Taylor, Dalsiana Somare, Arthur Somare, 
NFA Board Chairman Laurie William, Alan Moramoro, MP Walter Schnobelt, Police Commissioner David Manning, and Deputy Prime Minister John Rosso. The formal PNGDF ceremonial guard was performed before the casket was taken to Tokwa Airport. Upon arrival, the traditional washdown of PX 9204 signaled the return of Sir Rabi for the last time, and dignitaries of all levels, students and family, welcomed the great man in true traditional Tumbuan fashion. The warm welcome that awaited the funeral party was led by East New Britain Governor Michael Marum and other important dignitaries. Hundreds packed the airport's car park to witness the arrival of Sir Rabi's casket and even more filled the road in convoy back to Vunapope. The welcoming of an esteemed patriot to his people and country defined the kind of person and individual Sir Rabi was, and the impact of his passing was shown on the tear-stained faces of the people in his hometown. School children, business houses, paid homage to this great man as they lined the streets and roads as Sir Rabbi's motorcade took a final tour around his hometown before his casket was transported to the Vunapope Conference Center in Kokopo, where tributes were given by members of parliament. Government officials passed on his body to his immediate family after the program ended at the Vunapope Conference Center, who then took him to his home residence at Kenobot for a private gathering with close family and friends. <laughs> Sir Rabi was considered by many as an embodiment of Melanesian values and a giant in PNG politics. And at home, he was the measure of a peaceful man, full of humility and respect also for his loved ones. Helen Taragao worked for the great man and recounted the memories like they were just yesterday. Oh, he was a very down-to-earth person, a, a loving man, and, and also he was very close. I mean, he loved his family, yes, with especially the children. And that's why he, he did the best for the children by uh, taking them down to Australia, and they, they furthered their education out there in Brisbane. Oh, we really miss him dearly, uh, being me the head of the staff in the office, and, and of course down the line, we really miss him. Lenz Hager has been a faithful security guard and friend to the Namalu family and for the past 38 years has committed his service wholeheartedly. Mr. Lomplatine went to him, uh, 38 years, 38 years minister went to him, came place the whole bikini and more people are low and bloom, or get a six plus bikini. I'm not sure what happened me. Mary Piggini blew me one time and by him placed up one time. I was looking and by giving play and by him placed it one time. So I'm a good plan man. You know man block or us. I'm a lovely mole get a man. Nine side low bands too and mole all money all can go inside. No not chorus. You such that you come. I'm like Kim Nantas. The day's events proceeded with Sir Rabi's casket being transported once again to the house cry at Tobit, Ralwana village for the overnight program. The immediate family and friends gathered for the arrival of parliamentary members and their officials to honor the great man with words of solace and thanks to the family and communities. Time Mr. Blopangu and Mr. Paswan, the Mosambla Henga leader, especially former member Blong Wabek, later Daniel Kapi and close friend Blong. Uh, Serabi. And at the same time, Serabi is a true Papua New Guinean. And one blood true blood man where I um, represent all of you, me, long country. I'm not going to say anything, I'm going to say, long islands, you may long numbers, or one of my regions. Serabi, I'm going to say, true blood man. In his address to the friends, family, and community of Sir Rabi, Prime Minister James Marape expressed his immense gratitude and sympathy and made pledges in his honor. The blogger has stopped one time, passing big la bell sorry long family. As well as talk big la thank you for giving his life to be of service to our country. We want to place on record our great appreciation. The evening followed with tributes and contributions towards the Namalu family 
and also war custom initiated by Minister for Civil Aviation Walter Schnobelt and his people. It's the 14th of April, the final day of Sir Rabi's last journey to his birthplace and communities gathered to complete final preparations in the early hours of the morning at the Ralwana United Church for the public funeral. From a distance, you can hear the cry of a siren signaling the imminent arrival of Sir Rabi's motorcade bringing his casket for what is to be his last attendance in his hometown church. The crowd stand with cries that break the hearts of the Nomali family and members of the diplomatic corps and parliament. This was a scene not to be forgotten as tributes from outside the church could be heard murmured from every woman, man and child. Right in the village, long place long on Papa Blong Blong Eblomipla, long all big man Lopeles yet, all uncles, all aunties. Emino Tai Wherever he is, he comes back to the village and says, Stop on Temipla. Even sisters and brothers, I'm sorry. The church grew silent as Rabbi Langane Jr. expressed gratitude towards the people of East New Britain, followed by more tributes shared by Deputy Prime Minister John Rosso. We're all here today to take a big uh, thank you to this beautiful province we get to call home. Um, it's been a hard journey. Been a hard journey. He had we plan by walk about the spa last by walk about one more dignitaries blah blah blah. There's not enough thank yous in the world that this province has done for our family. We are beneficiaries in every sense of the word. He came from this province, this province gave, gave him so much opportunity, and then he rose to the top. So our family is forever indebted to this beautiful province. And we're so lucky that we get to call it home. It was an emotional sight as the funeral service came to a close at the Ralwana United Church where communities from all over East New Britain prepared to bid farewell to this great man that helped shape the country and provide opportunities to all that had the good fortune to be part of. There's many challenges for us uh, as a country. There's many challenges for us as a province. But I think uh, today, I think when we say thank you for my dad, uh, for, the, for the life that he's lived, uh, it is the celebration. Uh, we also get to thank this beautiful province and the people who are sitting outside, the people of East New Britain, uh, for, for giving him the welcome home. The casket of Sir Rabi was then transported back to Port Moresby on the evening flight where a welcome awaited the funeral party led by Minister for Foreign Affairs, Justin Kichenko and former Prime Minister, Pius Winty. The state funeral for Sir Rabbi Langanay Namaliu began with a housekeeping program where Reverend Jack Moore opened with a word of prayer. He described Sir Rabbi as a man of humility who put the interests of others before his own, citing the scripture, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Leaders and members of the diplomatic corps paid their respects. Notable figures like NCD Governor Paz Pakop and Prime Minister James Marapa delivered speeches. The final address was given by Arthur Somare, son of Grand Chief Sir Michael Somare. He spoke with deep sentiment in memory of Sir Rabi Namaliu, a former colleague. Somare na Namaliu, all in all, colleague that's all. All brother. To me, to me, East New Britain and give him ground lamb, time and policeman. He give him chance, lo to me, lo get up him, pigny blam, lo up, somare, lo ground, lo cocopo. So me amma slokam na sanap na tokosem. Papa blami, you've been got big blood in our street. 
you go back to East New Britain people, more particularly, Emi Promanim, all kind big man or Sam Sarabi Namalyu. On the 17th of April, the Lion State Ceremony was held at the Grand Hall of the Parliament House. Sir Rabi's family were joined by members of Parliament, members of the Diplomatic Corps and dignitaries to pay final respects to the late statesman, the fourth Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea. A sombre atmosphere envelopes Port Moresby as Papua New Guinea bid farewell to a great leader. Tuesday the 18th of April marks the final leg of the state funeral for Sir Rabi. The program begins with the laying of wreaths at the entrance, followed by the arrival of the casket with the PNG Defence Force Ceremonial Guard performing a solemn march. The service features beautiful choral items and hymns adding to the atmosphere of reverence and mourning. Special tributes are given by former members of parliament and family members, but an even more moving tribute and a special eulogy is read by former member for lay Bart Philemon. Ravi's focus was on the high standards of good governance. He served his country as a shining torch for others who follow him in public service in Papua New Guinea. He is a man of strong intellect and integrity, which made him as one of the cornerstone of Papua New Guinea. Sir Charles Lapani spoke highly of his late friend, being the only surviving member of the Gang of Four. The devastating news of Ravi's untimely death has been difficult for us all to understand. It has been not so long ago since Papua New Guinea mourned the passing of our Grand Chief, Sir Michael Tamari, the founding father of our nation, another, and another great leader and prime minister, and someone whom I also call as a close friend and brother, Sir Makara Marata. Now the nation is in mourning again for the loss of another foundational leader. Sir Rabi's eldest sons, Isaac and Rabi Jr., speak words of remembrance and pay their last respects to the man who not only fathered them, but the country as well. There were never any discussions that demanded us to follow or better his exact foot, footsteps in his academic or professional life. Instead, his advice was pretty simple. It was, centered, it was centered around, you need, to choose, you need to firstly choose something that will sustain yourself financially into the future. Then secondly, and very importantly, what you choose to do, you need to be happy doing, because that will allow you to keep going. For us as his children, we've always quietly been in awe about the resilience and perseverance of our father, particularly knowing that at many different points in his life, he had many defining moments that would have weakened the character of a person, but instead strengthened his resolve. We would like to thank the country for giving us the best dad in the world. He will surely be missed by us. Love you, Dad. The Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea delivers a heartfelt message, sharing his memories of Sir Rabi and his contributions to the country. The program includes Bible readings, a sermon, and a final dedication and committal. The service ends with a benediction given by Reverend Dr. Jack Moha. The casket is then transported to Independence Hill for the burial program. The event is a fitting tribute to a great man who dedicated his life to serving PNG, and Sir Rabbi Langanai Namali's legacy will live on in the hearts and minds of those he touched during his lifetime. At Independence Hill, the casket is taken to the burial site with the PNG Defence Force Ceremonial Guard performing and the burial program commences with Reverend Moa giving an opening prayer. The final tribute to Sir Rabi is made by Prime Minister James Marape in his keynote address. As we stand to witness the descent of a larger-than-life character who gave his life of service to our country,
Let us reflect on his life and take one or two lessons with us. We give ourselves in the manner he gave himself in total service to our country. As it descends, you and me will realize he takes nothing with him into his final resting place on earth. The casket is lowered and a traditional farewell song is performed by the Tolai Choir, followed by final respects from the immediate family and dignitaries. Reverend Moa gave a final dedication and committal before the firing of the volleys took place. Followed by the playing of the last post, a minute of silence, and the beautiful playing of the rose, which implies hope for a day when the living and the dead will rise together. Commander of the PNG Defense Force Major General Mark Goyna then presents the national flag to Isaac Namalu, who receives the flag on behalf of the Namalu family. The funeral service was a moving tribute Very to the big. life of Sir Rabbi Namalu, who Nation. will be remembered fondly by all who knew him. Please accept this national flag as a symbol of appreciation and recognition to your father, the late Right Honorable Se Rabin Amelu. And that's another edition of Scope. Thank you for your company. Good night. <laughs>